Hey guys, it's Carson Miller Tech here, back with another video. And in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to make the long awaited and long requested DIY Mavic Series Range Booster. Now, this is something that I have not been able to find anywhere else on the internet. So I literally came up with this design myself. I went through a lot of prototypes and a lot of different planning, and I came out to this final design that is meant for any Mavic Series controllers, whether that be the Mavic Mini, the Mavic Pro, the Mavic Pro Platinum, the Mavic 2, the Mavic Air, whatever it is, with the exception of the new Mavic Air 2. And the reason for that is just simply the controller is different and it doesn't work because it doesn't have the same antennas coming out of it as all the other Mavic controllers do. However, everything else is still compatible. So in this video, what I'm gonna be doing is first off, letting you know why you may want to make something like this. And then I'll also secondly be showing you, of course, how to assemble this. And then also I'll at the end be giving you a real life test and showing you how this changes up your performance of whatever Mavic drone you are flying. Starting with the reasons for why you may want to make a DIY range extender like this is first of all, there are range extenders out there obviously that you can purchase and I've got to say they're not super expensive, but if you're looking for something fun to do and you're just wanting to make a extender it yourself sometime, if you don't want to wait for shipping, then this is your friend. This is basically free as far as all the materials go because you very likely have every single material that is required to make this in your house already. So you shouldn't have to go out and buy anything. Also, the main reason of wanting to have this on in the first place is to either boost your range or help assist your distance in very interference prone areas. However, I do gotta say, if you're using this for something like trying to fly far, far outside visual line of sight, I am not endorsing using this in that case and I'm not gonna be testing that in this video, but I still will be showing you how it does improve the range. Um, but with that being said, those are the main reasons why you would want to make something like this. So with that being said, let's get into the simple DIY of how to put this together. So let's get right into the assembly. This shouldn't take you any longer than 25 minutes. It personally took me 20 minutes to fully assemble this. So as far as assembling it goes, you will need some materials and those include a thin paper or cardboard. You could use a manila file folder or a cereal box. You'll also need a knife. Uh, it could be a special knife like this one, or it could just be a regular pocket knife. Some clear tape. You'll also need a school glue stick, a good pair of scissors, and some aluminum foil or pipe tape that is aluminum. And then of course you will need the printout of the design itself. So you will want to make sure that in the top right corner that box does remain square and it should be a one inch by one inch square when you're done printing it. This is important because it could mess up the design of the booster later if this does not match. So if it doesn't, make sure to reprint as necessary. You're going to want to go and cut the folder in half if you are using a folder or just cut a piece of cardboard down to size if you are doing that. And then you're also going to want to chop the piece of paper in half, separating the directions from the rest of it. Next up, you're gonna to wanna to go and take your glue stick and apply it heavily across the surface of your cardboard or paper, and then put your paper with the parabolic boosters and the rectangle piece on top of it, pressing down thoroughly to make sure that it is adhered well. Then you're gonna to wanna to separate that rectangle from those little odd shaped parabolic pieces and then begin cutting out those parabolic pieces. Once you are done cutting out those pieces, they are very oddly shaped, so these are how they should look once you are completed. But after you're done with that, you're gonna to wanna to take your rectangular piece, which is still attached to the larger sheet of cardboard or paper, then get yourself out a piece of aluminum foil, trying to prevent uh, yourself from getting too many wrinkles. After you've got your aluminum foil piece taken off, take some glue and put it on the back side of where the rectangle is. Once you've got that done, take your piece of aluminum foil and cover it on that newly glued surface. It does not matter the direction in which the aluminum foil is laying on there. I typically like to include the reflective side facing out so putting the matte side down onto the glue but it really does not matter and as far as the wrinkles go 
I would try to avoid wrinkles, but they're kind of inevitable. If you happen to have any wrinkles in your aluminum foil, don't fret, it does not impact your performance of the booster itself, but it's just for aesthetic purposes. If you can keep that flat, obviously that will look better than if it's super wrinkled. After allowing some time for the aluminum foil to dry to the glue, take your scissors and cut out the rectangle. After that, you're gonna wanna take your knife and probably lay your newly cut out pieces on a safe surface to cut on and just use that knife to cut out the little rectangles on the parabolic boosters. These will be where the antennas fit through later, so make sure to cut these along the lines as best as you can. And then on the rectangular piece, there are 12 little black lines, and you're going to cut those out along the lines. After you're done cutting out everything with your knife, you're gonna wanna take those little parabolic pieces and fold them in half, and make sure you've got these aligned as best as possible, because if you don't have them aligned, you will have issues later on with your assembly. But after that is folded, you're gonna wanna fold your rectangular piece in half as well along that line. And once you've got that done, you're going to take your two parabolic boosters one at a time. Um, it does not matter which side you start with, but take one of the pieces and start inserting two of the tabs at once, I would suggest, into the rectangular piece. It's critically important that you put the parabolic pieces on the aluminum side of the rectangular piece. Otherwise, the reflector will not work. So make sure that you've got that placed correctly. Make sure you pull through the tabs and once they are through, you will fold them to the center, overlapping each other if you wanna use one piece of tape or folding them outwards if you wanna use two pieces of tape. But I folded mine inwards and then I just took a piece of tape taped them down and then I proceeded to do the same insertion procedure with the other two middle tabs and then the last two tabs. And then you repeat the same step with the other side of the booster. But once you've got that done, you are pretty much set. The booster is now assembled and you can fold it back and forth just a little bit to make sure it's all moving correctly. Putting it onto the controller itself, as you can see here, fits on super easily and because of the way it is designed it is meant to go and friction hold on to the antennas so you don't have to worry about it falling off if you're moving your controller around a ton or you're moving the antennas it's kind of nice because it ends up moving both of the antennas at once if you are moving them into different positions so even for that purpose it makes it very nice and convenient for moving your antennas but there you go that is all for assembling these antennas uh, I hope you didn't find this too difficult. If you did, you can look back at those directions just to make sure they have all the same information that I just gave you here. But with that being said, let's move on to real life testing. All right, so to the real world test now. I am in front of a power distribution center currently. For this initial test, I'm going to remove the booster just to show you how the drone performs in typical flight without any modifications whatsoever as far as when I'm flying, a distance away. If you're wondering why I am in front of this power distribution center, it is so then I can cause the most amount of interference, which is something you usually don't want to do with drones. However, in this case, I chose to do that because since I can't fly far away, I don't have a spotter today. Um, I will have to do this all by myself. I will have to make sure that I keep visual line of sight on the drone. So I'm just trying to cause the most amount of interference behind me to hopefully cause the drone to hit a point where you'll be able to tell that there's a difference between having the booster and not having the booster. At this point, I'm almost a thousand feet away. And as you can see, I am flying along the power lines as well. So I'm hoping that that amplifies the interference. I am almost 2000 feet away at this point and I still have incredibly good feed. I am not noticing any lag on the video. As you can see, instantaneous feedback and I'm not noticing any interference as far as flying away. I would have expected at least one bar to drop by now, but I haven't had any. So that's pretty spectacular. I'm gonna go up just a little bit because the trees are starting to get in the way. So at this point, I am almost 4,000 feet away and that just goes to show that the Mavic Mini really has an astounding feed. Like, I literally can fly this far away and not notice a single hiccup. That is crazy. Being frustrated with my initial results of this test, I went back and flew into the same area and I was able to start noticing some dropouts and some weak signals, which is a little odd, but 
since I was able to experience that, I then threw on the booster, and as soon as this video cuts to a little bit later, this is where the booster is on. And as you can see, the feed got really super clear. There's no more fuzziness to it, and the control is instantaneous. So I was super satisfied with this result. However, uh, my camera was not working while I recorded this, which is a little frustrating, but at least the screen recording worked. So you do have that, but uh, now, I'm just going to return back to the other clips of uh, where my test failed. So I'll be talking a little bit more about that. So I wish I could get some interference right now. This is a terrible sales pitch as far as the booster goes, but I am going to throw on the booster anyways. Um, I cannot fly any further in this case since I don't have a spotter, but if you do want to see a future video with maybe a range test for the Mavic Mini, if I could get a spotter around, then definitely let me know if you want to see that down in the comments below. But as far as right now, I am noticing no dip in feed, which is great. Uh, I do have the booster on now, so I shouldn't notice any dip in feed at all. But I guess a good positive here is that the booster doesn't interfere and it doesn't make the feed any worse, which I would hope it doesn't because like I said, I've worked on prototyping this thing a ton and I have been working on it a lot just to come up with this design. And if you wanted a little bit more information about the design, I'm gonna talk about it for about the next minute here. So if you're not interested in that, I guess skip over that. But the way that this booster works is it is called a parabolic booster. So as far as a parabolic booster goes, how it works is basically it allows for any signal that is on the front end of the booster, it will go and bounce that signal off of the reflector and into the antenna. No matter what angle it's coming in at, it will always go, bounce off, and hit to the middle. And this is similar to how satellite dishes work. If you've got DISH or DirecTV or any satellite service, that is how those antennas are made. And so this works on the same principles. I did not come up with the parabolic design, but I did shrink it down to where it works on the Mavic Mini and other Mavic controllers. So the design and shape of these boosters are incredibly important because if you get it off, even by a little bit, it won't reflect the signal correctly. So I'm now almost all the way back. And so that pretty much does it for this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to let me know by clicking the thumbs up button down below as well as subscribing for future videos. Again, this is available for download for free down in the description below, but I'll also be leaving links to some free 3D print versions of this if you have a 3D printer, as well as some paid versions on Amazon if you're interested in buying a legit version. So with that being said, if you wanna watch my last video, that should be up there, and some random videos should be down there. But that is it for this video. Hope to see you in the next one. Peace.